Hi, All Stephen. Right. Hey, Katie. How's it going? Good. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so I think I just started our webinar. Yeah, we're, we are live. People are, we are live. saying hi in chat, and we're ready to kick off the first of the Solid Experience series. Are you excited? Woo -hoo -hoo. I'm very excited. Very excited. Um, yeah, so thanks everybody for joining us. We're going to do a we're going to introduce the 3D experience platform. Um, let's see here. This is a beautiful picture of the compass. Um, whoops. There we go. Okay, and just to so everybody knows what 3D experience works is. Uh, it is a tool that unites your entire organization from design and manufacturing to marketing service in one collaborative uh, product development environment. My name is Katie Shemligian. I'm Stephen Murphy, and we're working on the 3D Experience platform. So I'm on the engineering side. Katie's more on the influencer side. So we're here, we're excited, and we want to basically show you what this new technology is and how it looks in your day-to-day -day use of the platform. Beautiful. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the platform and the platform and the platform, <laughs> but specifically here's the agenda for uh, today. We're going to introduce the platform um, and the cloud and we're going to do a little role play, a little day in the life. Uh, I'm going to play the manager and Steven's going to play the designer. Um, so it should be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to just dive right in. So, so can you tell me what is the platform? Right. So I guess the best way to, oh, wait, first we got to talk about our webinars. Oh, you're right. I forgot yeah. we did all these <laughs> webinars. So this is a great time, you know, if you are just starting out on your your platform discovery check out the webinars we had during 2020 and the, of course the webinars we're going to be making here in 2021 and we really dive into the different aspects of the 3d experience platform so for example if you're interested in project planning and management there's a webinar for you if you are more interested in how the 3d experience platform integrates directly with solidworks there's a webinar for you just check out our webinar page and you know if you're interested in how to design and how to use the 3D experience platform. Well, that's what you're here today for. Beautiful. Yeah, and you just uh, hold your phone up to that QR code. It'll take you right to our website. Um, there'll also be a link um, in the chat. So good. But yes, yeah, so let's see where we start. Um, you know, to play to, ex you know, to explain how we all got started here. At some point, you've all experienced SolidWorks whether it's through school or work. Um, and if you can think of the platform of products that are available from SolidWorks, you know, the simulation, composer, electrical, PDM. Uh, if, if you can think of them as apps on your desktop, you can also now start to think and understand um, that these apps are now available on the cloud. So... Yeah, so whereas everything kind of started out in, in individual silos on your local desktop where you're storing locally, We've really expanded right. into the world of cloud, the world of the internet. And what this means is that now you have the broader ability to control your data, to design, to use tools that would otherwise not be available within the SolidWorks portfolio, all from you know the comfort of a web browser. So the application side and the, the 3D experience works portfolio not only includes all of the desktop apps that you love, but in a, an extended reach onto design apps, onto uh, project management apps, and you know engineering and hiring applications, it really just gives you the tools that you need to do whatever your current role is. That's right. That's right. So um, again, it starts with this this beautiful picture of our compass, and if you can think about. Um, whatever your, your job title is, um, what you do it, as far as when you're a member of a team working on a project, uh, you've got different roles um, that are assigned based on what you do for your, for your work. Um, so that's what this 
slide is sharing. Yeah, the idea being that you know everyone everyone has a different day to day task, and the platform allows you to kind of customize that. So, without further ado, let's let's take a look at it. Let's stop talking theoretical and let's see what it looks like to be my manager, Katie. Yeah, that's right. So I get to play manager, and you are my designer. Um, so how this role play is going to work is I'm going to do some collaborating using the platform. Um, so that's what you'll see at first. And then Stephen's going to take over and do some modeling in SolidWorks. And then he's actually going to use some of those cloud apps it's, um, to do some more modeling. I think it's um, Design X, right, is what you're going to use? Yeah, X Design. Yeah. Or X Design, right. X Design and some X Sheet Metal, so cloud-based applications to be able to design. Let's dive Perfect. right in. Right. So these two uh, icons, I want you to pay attention to. Those are how I'm going to do the collaboration portion. Um, this first one, the, the 3D player, will allow me to, you know, pret pretend like I'm on a beach uh, using my iPad, and I can, you know, you, you know, grab content and, uh, you know, check it out from anywhere on any device. Um, and then this other app is uh, something that'll help me. Uh, create tasks um, and you know talk about deliverables for to be an effective manager. So um, let's dive right in there. So let me get into the platform here. So I am in a browser. I'm using Google Chrome, and this is my dashboard. So just so you know, um, you can have several dashboards based on either. Um, different projects that you're working on or different groups that you're involved with. Um, so today we're going to be using this SQR robot design. Uh, yeah, that's exciting. So you're saying that you can kind of customize those dashboards to have the tools you actually use? That's right. That's right. That's and so um, where I'm going to start is with our beautiful compass. And you can see as I hover over it um, and I go over a little to the right, the roles and apps uh, that I am allowed to use or that, that are assigned to me pop up. Um, and this particular app that is one of my favorites is the 3D Play. So I just grab it and drag it into my space. And there's a project that I've been working on with Steven and I can't remember the project. I can only remember certain attributes like the letters NTD um, seem to uh, come to mind. So I search, and that's what's really cool about the platform too, is it's got this really uh, amazing search engine behind it. And so I noticed that the, the file names, you know, those don't really have NDT in it. So you're saying you can search any custom properties or attributes or different information about the files? Yeah, different information, um, you know, the dates they were done. Yeah, whatever you can think of to remind you of, um, you know, the project that you're working on. So I just happen to know that this one here, this looks like the one I want to look at. So I'm going to drag it in. Uh, okay, I'm going to make this a little bigger. I'm going to move this down so I can X out of there. Okay, so here we are looking at the part. And I'm just using my mouse to move it around, to check it out. Um, and so I'm just noticing that these legs here seem super long. So I can, I have these different tools at the bottom. The, these are the view tools and then the actual tools here. Um, I can explode, oh wait, actually I wanna show you guys that, it's pretty cool. Um, I can explode. Oh, that's cool. So you didn't even need to pre-make an explosion for it. It's automatic. It's automatic. Isn't that awesome? And I'll go back to, whoops, there we go. Go back to the view. Um, oh, no, that was a tool too. Sorry. I can um, splice it. Oh, wow, that's, a, that's an easy section view. Section <laughs> that's so view, <cool>. that's, <laughs> yep. <laughs> can check that out too. Um, actually, yeah, so if you just hit the section view button, you can even, you can leave it up there or you can hit the eraser and remove it. It's that's right. Good. Okay. So back to this view. Anyway, 
So now um, I'm realizing that these legs are, they look really long to me. So I'm going to take the tools just to say, hey, I'm right. I can measure. Look at that. Yep, those are way too big. So I'm going to make a little note on this drawing. And I like green. Green means go. So I'm going to draw a little note here, like here to here. I want you to take off two inches. Makes and, sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then I want to do a little screenshot here. Ah, so convenient way of capturing that information. Yes, yeah, super easy, super basic. And then I'm going to hop over here to create a task for Stephen. So start up here, and I'm going to say um, change the length mm -hmm. Makes of sense. the leg. OK. Add open. Um, but first, I want to find. Is that what? If I let, click this, yeah. If you double click on that, you'll jump right into the basically the structure of the product. Yes. So you can more easily see it. So I, I, do, I don't know about you. I don't remember the names of all these random <laughs> assemblies and sub assemblies. Right. So I'm creating the task here. Um, description. Uh, yeah. So what's what's really cool about these tasks is that not only are we, you know, filling in the description, how long you expect it to take, but we're also able to provide different pieces of information. So the current state, is it to do? Is it in progress? Is it done? What day do you want it to be done? And, you know, how much time are you allocating? And on top of that, project management wise, the assignee, you can assign it to literally anyone. As long as they're not named Steen, that 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 person. Will take <laughs> but uh, on top Here's of that, not just thing. like a normal email, you know, because in in an email you would have a conventional attachment, but here you can actually directly link to your content. So in this case, the image file, and then also Katie here can navigate to find which file inside of the assembly that she wants to have linked in. And I would do it just by selecting on the uh, on the assembly there. Much easier than scrolling. Oh, right. So I go here, click, and I can actually dig deeper into the maturity state. If I, so I don't want to grab yeah, the, so into the into the assembly level. So you can see that, you know, you probably want to give me the uh, uh, if you go one up one level, oh, one, four, four, six, it looked like would be a pretty good, you know, piece of information to give me. Oh, that whole thing. OK. Uh, so it's highlighted. And I should see it over here, right? Yep. So it's down beneath that 2879 because it was highlighted. And then if you scroll a bit of ways, it depends on you know where it is and how many pieces are in the assembly. But we should have a highlighted. Uh, there it is. Is that it? Perfect. Yep. So you just want to drag and drop that puppy right over into, into the attachments. Into the attachments. Oh, hold on. So you can hit escape. Yeah, that works. And then scroll. Okay, I gotta have it like right there. Click. Boop. Oh. Okay. Remember, you can also hit F11 to make your uh, screen bigger too. I like to do it the hard way. Okay. <laughs> there Perfect. we go. So <gasps> that project is saved. Do, 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 do. Okay, and that's not all I want to do. Oh, there's more? Oh, no. <laughs> um, I just remember this piece, too. I was having a problem with it. Um, I wanted to add something to it. So, um, yeah, 202, oh, 02064. Um, I'm going to take this and drag it nope 
I want to yes, find you'd it. You'd probably here. do it from the, the structure, yeah. So then if uh, you scroll down a ways, yep, it should be under that assembly. So just go ahead and I, I'd say scroll pretty much until you see the, uh, the highlighted segment as you should be able to pretty quickly identify where that sub-assembly is located. Uh, so that's the one we had before. That's what we had before. Ugh. We're really looking for that sub-assembly. There it is. There it is. OK, so I grab it and drag it home and then pop it into my 3D play. So this part, I really had a questions about I wanted to um, put a bracket back here I think it would be really cool if there was a bracket so um, I'm going to keep the color green and I'm going to draw just what I think a bracket should look like <laughs> no that's actually better than I could do <laughs> uh, and I'm going to make a little note over here make a bracket whoops bracket <laughs> okay and then Perfect. wait then i wanted to make a screenshot of this so he knows what i want to do here and then i also would like these holes i'm gonna keep it green uh these two holes right here, I want to do something mm -hmm. with a pin. I want to have a pin. Yeah, we gotta we gotta connect this somehow. So pin. I like it. I like that idea. Okay. Valid. And then we'll do another screenshot. All right, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna do another task. And I'm gonna just combine those two. I'm gonna say make a bracket, I can't spell, bracket, and add pin. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here. You said F11. Yeah, F11 inside of Chrome should uh, give you a bit more space to work here. Yeah, I like a little bit more space here. So. Again, the description, make a bracket, add pin, just so he knows what I want to do. I'm going to make it a to-do. Uh, I'm going to say get it done before tomorrow. It should only take you an hour. Oh, slave driver. <laughs> and Steven, there he is. Uh, and the attachment, so I'm going to grab those screenshots. There's one. There's two. And then the actual assembly here. Yep. I'm gonna Sweet, that'll give me something to work off of. And I think I think that was it. Click save. That was it. You just gave me a bunch of things to do. <laughs> I gave you a bunch of stuff. Okay. So you should see should see those yeah everything is successfully added you should see that in your notification definitely so uh you've given me what two tasks in the to-do column yeah so uh I better, what, I better I, get to work <laughs> i'm slacking off over here so i guess it's time to switch on over yep do i need to give that to you or you can grab it uh you know if you could make me presenter that'd be awesome okay nope i can do it you got it. Okay. I have the power. So before we get too excited, let's let's recap slightly on you know what we're looking what at. We because did. we just talked about the platform. And really, you know, that was done by Katie in what could have been a web browser on a phone or a tablet from the glorious beach. But I'm gonna be working <laughs> with SolidWorks and some of the cloud modeling tools to really drive that innovation and that uh, you know the changes that she wants to make. So first, we're going to jump into SolidWorks, and we're going to use the tasks she gave us in order to you know, do the work we need. And then we're also going to use those tasks to give the deliverables that Katie wants as well. Uh, so the cool thing we're doing here is we're using SolidWorks Connected. And SolidWorks Connected is 
kind of like your typical SOLIDWORKS, except with a bunch of upsides, including data management on the cloud, uh, easy access into the 3D experience platform, and lo and behold, the ability to see my tasks and assignments. Notice that I did get some notifications from Katie on what I was supposed to do. It's going to go ahead and alert me that I have something to work on. In my to-do list, I can go and check out my tasks for the day. So um, let's change the length of the leg first. That sounds easier to me. I have all the data that she wanted to give me. I don't have to go and sort through emails. I don't have to go find the file she's talking about. Here's a screenshot. Let me uh, let me just go preview that. All right, that's pretty straightforward. You know, not the best art, but it'll pass. It'll pass. <laughs> and then I can open the part directly from the task. So because everything's related, I don't have to spend the time trying to go and make sure I'm editing the right version or that the version that is attached, I don't have to integrate it back into the assembly down the road. Instead, the I can source just jump... of truth. Yeah. Exactly. So the data as the source of truth inside of my PLM app, and this looks very similar if you've used, say, PDM or some of the other data management software, you can see that we have the same kind of status where I can go in, I can reserve the parts that I want to edit. So in my case, I want to go ahead and edit this component. And I, you know, I'm kind of lazy. I'm not going to check it out yet. I'll do that later. And she said, remove two inches, fine by me. Here we go. Boom, two inches done. So when I go back over into my PLM tab, you'll notice that it indicates which files need to be updated and saved. Uh, and then when I go in, I can actually save the individual file I want to or save the assembly that's been updated. If I want to, I could also make a new revision, add comments uh, in order to track our work. So, you know, decreased by two. Cool. And release that file so that everyone else can edit it. So you're not stepping on each other's toes. You're really able to make sure that you keep your data safe, but also have it accessible from any location. So this is a huge benefit over storing locally and trying to kind of make things work with Dropbox. Instead, I have my updated file and you know I'm off to the races in that sense. But I'm not done yet. Unfortunately, Katie gave me two tasks. So let's, let's jump back over to my task assignment. I can say, okay, uh, I, I worked on this. I'm gonna provide a little bit more. Maybe I'll provide a screenshot down the road if I really want to, to prove I did it. But this one's more interesting, it's more complicated. So the bracket itself, we have the bracket file. So I'll just go ahead and open that up. And we're really going to dive into the, the tool set we have inside of SolidWorks and inside of the 3D Experience platform. I don't yeah, only have to edit stuff in SolidWorks. Yeah, you could have dragged it over to SolidWorks, but you're, how did it know to open? That's pretty cool, okay. Yeah, so I just told it to open. It's smart enough to realize that I'm in SolidWorks. I can close out of that file. I already saved it to the cloud, made a new revision. And here, as I'm looking at this, Katie wants me to make a bracket here and of course some pins. So what I can do is let's just take a look at the options we have for the platform. So, you know, in, in the presentation sense, we've modeled in the plat uh, SolidWorks. It's something you're very used to seeing. I'm not spending too much time there because it's really the same software you just have the ability to save all that data to the cloud and really have a single source of truth linked up with these other tools. Now, here's the real big game changer is actual modeling in the cloud. So not only are we able to view content and work from there, we can also take content into the cloud and, and work on it like we're doing CAD. So my example here, um, I think I can do this better in the cloud or you know, for the, for the sake of ease, I want to be able to work with XDesign. So here, I'm gonna have my X-Design window and I could go and search this back out, but I could also just take and drag over my X-Design file or my SolidWorks assembly that I wanna be working on. So we'll let SolidWorks rest for a little bit. Oh, that's cool. And we'll go ahead and full screen this. And now I'm working completely within a Chrome browsing window. So I could be on a tablet and actually works fantastic with tablets. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make my edits. So I need to add a bracket. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll reserve the top level assembly so that I can insert a new part. Let's make sure that nobody overrides my data. There's no issues with 
uh, you know, having multiple versions of the same file. Then uh, I'll go ahead and start to build my component. So insert a new part into my assembly. We're going to call this SQR bracket. Really original, square robot, SQR. I thought it made sense. <laughs> We'll pop that into our assembly. SQR. <laughs> and what's really cool is that the way XDesign works is you're kind of working in both a part and assembly environment at the same time. It feels much more natural than, say, SolidWorks. I can go in and I want to go ahead and edit this bracket. And when I activate it, it'll go ahead and, you know, gray out everything I don't need or uh, add that level of transparency. And then I can get to work at making my bracket. So the, the sketching, the functionality that we're all really used to using, uh, we, we really have the ability to leverage inside of a cloud environment. So for example, just using the S key, if you're used to SolidWorks, I can go ahead and just create my sketches. I can go ahead and add a line here. So notice this is the whole I want to go ahead and just, as I'm dragging, it'll allow me to snap geometric relationships, just the way SolidWorks is. Add another horizontal line here. Uh, maybe I want to make it perpendicular in order to make sure we're at the center. Maybe these are for construction, so I'll just select the lines, convert them to construction lines. You know, everything you're pretty used to doing inside of SolidWorks, we can do. Uh, and on top of that, we don't have to be as reliant on the Smart Dimension tool uh, because it's it's very well integrated into, uh, you know, as I make changes and edits, it allows me to adapt on the fly uh, to add those dimensions, add those relationships. So, you know, just lining up these parts on the side corners here. So that warning wasn't a big deal. No, so that warning was just telling me that I, I provided the software a little bit too much information in uh, order to define my <laughs> my bracket. I was trying too hard. TMI, got it. Exactly. And so from here, it's the same type of experience where we get to create or remove geometry based on sketches. So it's the same idea of a parametric modeler, but we have a what's called the super feature, which means that if you click the wrong uh, tool, if you click, say, cut, but you meant thin, or cut, but you meant add, or sweep, or loft, or surfaces, you can switch between each of those on the fly. So you really aren't constrained in the way that you would conventionally be within SolidWorks. I don't know how many times I've clicked on the uh, <laughs> the wrong feature on the fly and had to then go delete it and start from scratch. We can really just pivot into making our component. That is so cool. Yeah, it's very intuitive, uh, and it's cool because we are we are completely working on the cloud, which is something that you know has has a lot of value in terms of you don't need a licensing server, you don't need all these different things that would go into a conventional CAD setup at your job, and instead yeah, I need a you can powerful computer to you know with to run it yeah exactly so i mean this is this is being run through the cloud i don't i'm not using say the solidworks locally uh and then i still have a lot of the tools that solidworks has so for example symmetrical relationships i can go in and define the shape that i want based off of the information i'm inputting and what's cool is that they've been able to take that and add extra value to uh, basically the workflow. So for example, uh, they've, they've learned from SolidWorks, they've learned from, you know, what people usually do, where they want to pull dimensions, and there's actually a good bit of artificial intelligence wrapped into the software. So here, you know, depending on what I select, it's going to give me different components to work with you know, different uh, dimensions, different geometric relationships, so that I can basically make my component much quicker than I would be able to conventionally. That's so cool. Perfect, so I do have my sheet metal component I'm making. Uh, we're still adding material. 
go the other way and oh nope just kidding that would be in the part that's a bad idea um, and then let's say I want to go back in and edit that sketch in order to have those holes you know you still have the ability to basically uh, design on the fly so let's say I want it to be slightly larger so that I uh, have a little bit of tolerance and notice how it gives me those purple indicators so if I wanted okay. to make it the same size as the other one all I have to do is select that and it's going to automatically provide the equal geometric relationship to my component and you know it's it's a pretty streamlined process in terms of component creation now I can go and edit that extrude oh or delete it if I really <laughs> wanted to yeah that's okay I really didn't have to delete it but that's what I clicked so <laughs> but like I said it's very easy and intuitive if you've been using SolidWorks it's really going to be uh, straightforward uh, in this case I need to add some reference geometry here so add a reference plane so I can just do a typical mirror and then we'll do the mirror component here around of course my new plane grab this the mirror and let's not get sloppy let's go ahead and fill these edges I can click the edge click fill it Oh uh, wow, yes. you're really going above and beyond. I didn't say <laughs> to do that, but wow. What what is so cool too is that if I select this edge, you can use basically the fillet selection helper. It, it's a bit of AI as well that comes up with intelligent filleting strategies for your part depending on your features and your parts. So a lot of it becomes more automated than it would have necessarily been. Uh, lastly, I don't know. Let's make a cutout here. We don't need to. We don't need to have this be a solid bracket. Let's go ahead and uh, sketch here above and beyond. Let's go ahead and do this so that you know we can have a respectable design, something that looks a little bit cooler than like a default bracket here. And then let's let's put a cutout. And you can really go in. Notice how I automatically am snapping. If I wanted to say do center arc slots, it's very easy to do. As long as I don't uh, click in the wrong spot. And then you know you can always of course go in and add your geometric relationships and dimensions to really define where you want something to be. And you even have the ability to do uh, pretty advanced smart dimensions. So for example, uh, if I select from the edge here, you can choose where you want that to be coming out from. So, you know, it's, it's the same CAD software you love. It's a little bit different looking, but it's not, uh, you know, it's nothing scary. It's actually quite intuitive to pick up. Let's say, uh, let's say I want this to be a little further. I don't know, something cool like this. And you could define it, but in my case, I'm just looking for cool concepts currently. I'll go ahead and uh, blow that through. So just another feature. And oh no, I chose extrude rather than cut. You know, what am I ever going to do with myself? I don't have to make a new feature. I can just switch to removing the material. And that, honestly, I use that all the time. So, uh, you know, you can choose to cut through the material, whichever direction you want. Uh, yep, that direction. Bada bing, bada boom. So here's the fun part, though. And, and here's really where you have a lot of flexibility because of the platform i can take this component and let's say i want to convert it into a sheet metal part i have the ability to basically switch from x design which is what we've been using this whole time to x sheet metal so a dedicated sheet metal app within the platform on the cloud that i can then go and design with 
So look, I'm now I'm in X sheet metal. I didn't have to even do anything. Uh, I can go into the, now my new sheet metal tools and I can convert this part into being sheet metal. So in this case, you know, it's really fast to design and to pivot between the different components that you want. Uh, feature recognition will just uh, display features. Grab That's that. Really cool. and I thought you had to save it like a file and then open up sheet metal. I didn't know you could do it that way. That's very nope. cool. And now I have a flat pattern. I'm quite literally done with this part. Uh, I can even take this and say, uh, export the DXF file of my part. I'm just going to download it uh, here, pick which side I want of my flat pattern. Maybe I don't want bend lines or stamps. It just really depends. Uh, here, I'll go ahead and save that out. Flatten that back up. And I'm, you know, I'm good to go. That's and the great. cool part here, if I jump back into the assembly level, make sure this is saved. You know, I now am working with the same model. So if I refresh, and if also, uh, more importantly, I'm going to jump back over into SolidWorks. And we're really able to uh, see the benefits here. So I'm going to reload this from the server. And notice that that SQR bracket is now part of my model. But I oh, want to go wow. back over to SolidWorks to finish up. So I'm going to go back into SolidWorks to uh, finish up those pins. And it's going to basically download the new bracket file. And you know this is an easy way to, be, uh, to jump back and forth between your solid, uh, you know, your SolidWorks and your X design. And so what happened here is I, I was actually outside of SolidWorks for too long, so it's gonna uh, basically request uh, that I, yeah, it's just right. gonna want me to log back in. So it's it's for safety precautions, you know, you really don't, um, there you go. So it was able to click through and, and run the login back to make sure that yes, I'm still the same person. <laughs> Uh, and then it can, of course, jump back into my model. So really easy, really seamless in terms of jumping between them. And you can see that I do have that square bracket. Uh, the last thing Katie wanted me to do is add some quick connectors. All right, that oh, is, that's right. Um, I forgot about that. Quick release. So you know, I want to make sure that my model works. I can search my entire database, find a pin I like, drop it in. And you know this is really the 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 power of the platform is that Out of you know, we we have the ability to do everything you love in SolidWorks, the ability to you know even do the control drags to auto make mates. Oh, not the control drags. Excuse me, the alt drags to snap. So here I can do the grab the edge, quick mate it there. And now I'm done, Ooh, so I'm going to go look in. Look at that. Save everything up. It's going to add the pieces it needs. It's going to go ahead. I had that part checked out. And, you know, added bracket and connectors. Wow. So the workflow is very straightforward. It's very easy to jump back and forth between what you're working on uh, and that's kind of the, the power of the platform. Now, in terms of updating Katie, let's not forget, manager's gonna hound me to make sure everything's done. So let's go ahead and give her some information to make her life a little easier here. Oh, come on, I'm on vacation. I know, so I've been working on the bracket. Uh, I'll go in and here I can add as a deliverable the square bracket DXF file. So that's a DXF file that she can check out. I can, I'll save that. Uh, maybe I want to show here. Uh, let's see. It does take, uh, you know, three minutes or so to index. So here we go. And then, you know, two more minutes or a minute, we'll have the uh, the push connectors as well. So I can make sure this is going over to Katie for approval. She'll get a notification since she's the one approving it. 
Uh, in terms of the leg, I really don't need to provide her anything else, but I could just, you know, drag this over here instead and, you know, show that, yeah, the leg's edited. It. Yeah. Could take a screenshot of that just so that, you know, saves her some time. Or I could put the part in there and make her go measure it herself. All that depends on <laughs> what you want to do. But the idea is that all that information is now saved. If I had any issues, I could have been chatting back and forth and everyone's been, you know, alerted to what's going on and there's a history of it. That's so cool. All right, so going, jumping back over to the PowerPoint here. This has really been a, a method of working in the platform, doing SolidWorks, and then of course, actually modeling and using the cloud-based tools in with alongside of SolidWorks itself. So a lot of information there, <laughs> there's a lot going on, but the idea is that it opens up your design opportunities. And then of course, Katie could go in, um, we won't waste the time to jump back over to her screen. Basically, she can For go me in. to click approve, I don't, yeah. Yeah, get drag that. it over to the accepted file, you know, part, and we're off to the races. So here's the last part of the conversation. You know, how is this different than SolidWorks? Is it better? Is it worse? Tell me the details. And one of the huge benefits of the 3D experience SolidWorks is the ability to just install it directly from the cloud. So you don't have to wait for activations. You're not waiting on CAD admins. You're not, you know, pulling licenses and, and dueling with all that. You have named user licenses, so it's part of your account. You just go in and you quite literally just hit download from the cloud. So it gives you all a, the roles that are assigned to you, yeah. Exactly, and it gives you a ton of information too on how to use them and, and how to get yourself up and running on the fly here. And when we talk about 3D Experience SolidWorks, so your, your typical desktop SolidWorks is on the left in red, and then your 3D Experience SolidWorks is in blue. And things aren't always the exact same. So for example, in typical SolidWorks, we have PDM. So you have workflows and the ability to save files locally. But in 3D Experience SolidWorks, we have much more. So Anovia Works, which is a product lifecycle management and includes maturities and ECOECR and issue management and you know a ton of tasks, a ton of stuff that just doesn't exist inside of your typical SolidWorks installation. And, and the same goes for all these other tools, you know, Treehouse, we have more in-depth ways to look at relationships. 3D Play is like a eDrawings++ plus 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 in the cloud where anyone can easily access large assemblies without having those awful load times. And yeah. then, you know, rendering and tasks and conversions and help files, it's all there in, you know, a better form. Right. So, when we talk about what the options are in terms of the 3D Experience platform, you can run with the connected applications. That's what you saw today was that SolidWorks connected. But if you like your current SolidWorks, you can use what we call the connector apps. So for example, the ability to link your typical SolidWorks to your uh, to the cloud. So you so don't- So if I already have, have SolidWorks, yeah, I already have SolidWorks, I can just, yeah. Same thing with all these other ones. Draft site. Yeah, SolidWorks, Visualize, Draft site, and actually it goes even further. You can do it with Inventor and other products. So you really can link up the platform to whatever software you're using. And then on top of that, you have all the cloud applications. So if you're doing sheet metal or weld mints or some crazy MBD stuff, there or generative design, heck, there are a ton of different amazing cloud applications, which we obviously don't have time to go through today. But the idea is that you can quite literally do your job on the cloud with this setup, and you can collaborate with everyone else using the 3D Experience platform. It's just a much more dynamic and uh, robust way of, of working with your files. All right, so let's talk about the offers. We've all heard about the SolidWorks Standard Pro and Premium. We've been doing it for years. So how does that convert over to 3D Experience SolidWorks? Well, you guessed it, there's a standard pro premium. And the breakdown starts off with your typical SolidWorks standard, SolidWorks Pro, SolidWorks Premium. And there's a couple add-ons and, and things that aren't the exact same, but for the most part, you're looking at standard pro and premium, as well as the collaborative industry innovator and collaborative business innovator roles. Now, without going into too much detail and some of the other webinars really dove into those roles, 
uh, they're basically the backbone of a platform. They give you that Anovia and that way to collaborate in real time. So those are all included in each of the packages. And then also 3D Creator. So that is the 3D Creator is the name for the X Design application, which is what I showed you in order to create that sheet metal part, the initial modeling, working with the assembly, navigating, all of that's done through 3D Creator. Sculptor gets added onto Pro and Premium, and Sculptor is a sub D modeling software. So if you do kind of a complex surfacing or anything that has to do with that push, pull, or industrial designing, 3D Sculptor is something you should check out. We have a some more content on that. It's very cool, and <laughs> as someone who loves surfacing, that thing saves you a ton of time. It's, it's kind of crazy. I could even use it. <laughs> yeah, and it's very intuitive. It's very easy to use. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, on the 3D Experience Premium side, you have the Simulation Designer. So that is, once again, another uh, application that links up and runs uh, using your local resources, but also can take advantage of the cloud. So, I mean, that's a lot of information. I oh, thank so you yeah, for sticking around. <laughs> but and th any, yeah, any thanks for putting up with me Katie? driving. Yeah, what's that? Any any closing comments? What do you oh, think? no, I was just going to uh, thank you for being so patient while I was driving the uh, the platform. That was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, that was it was good. That was fun. Thanks. Thanks for letting me be your boss. Uh, well, you know, we'll we'll see when it comes time for raises. We'll we'll see who wants to be whose boss then. <laughs> but that being said, once again, just to wrap things up, definitely go check out the previous webinars. It's go to stage.com channel salt experience dash en for the English. You there's a ton of information there. We're adding to it all the time. And if you want to stay on top of the change in technology, it's something to keep an eye on. So thanks everyone okay. for your time, and hopefully we uh, added a little bit of value in terms of what the design world looks like these days. Yeah, thank you everyone. All right.